Okay, good afternoon everyone. So we are going to learn a new topic this afternoon. Actually, it's more of like um, a continuation of lesson one, wherein we're able to know what are the different kinds of quantitative research. Some of you have already checked the lesson two in Quipper. So you have an idea na nga, we're diving deeper into correlational and um, causal or sort of like experimental kind of research no and we are also going to dig deeper on the difference between a survey research and experimental research like when do we use survey research and when applicable ang experimental research on sinakalhian nila no when man tamo gamit og intervention when man tamo gamit og survey instrument no so i know some of you have already had an idea of our lesson this afternoon kay i've seen na ano may uban nga nag-access sa quipper so we'll just you know, dig deeper onto this lesson. We will not finish everything, no? Kay 51 slides nisha, so medyo taas taas. Kung asara takuto brung alas 4, I will not extend it until 4 p. Uh, 4:30, unlike sa previous discussions, because um, mohatag pa ko og pointers pod for the exam, and we will just dismiss early because of course you need to prepare for exams next week. So before we will start, let ha us have our prayer first. The name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Prayer to Saint Rita. O oh, glorious Saint Rita, you did share in a marvelous manner the sorrowful passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. Give me the grace to suffer in patience the miseries of this life, and be my refuge in all my necessities. Amen. Saint Rita, pray for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, the Afternoon. So this afternoon, we are going to learn about lesson two um you won't be able to submit uh, i will not ask you not to submit um the study guide answers for lesson two because you will have to focus more on your chapter one so una pa man mo, no, mo submit mo on october 8th and yung title i do hope that i i have already seen no um a group nga after this akong discussion nagsenda yun sila within that day no sa yellow pad to nila gisulat so um, you just write that siguro in a yellow pad or in um, Word document. I submit lang atong link. The link is already uploaded in um, Quipper. Kuyog siya atong video recording, I think, no? On how to write your research title. Next page ato is the link where you will submit your um, research titles. So, dito lang siya submit para mausa na ako og collect, no? Kay, again, I, although I allow some to send it through my email or messenger but i highly encourage everyone will just submit it in quipper through google form um october 8 pa man put on the deadline layo pa man no kay par at least mausara na ako og collect dili siya maglapta lapta at the same time dili matabunan kay namugay times kas matabunan sa uban nga messages sa college students pod nako na and faculty members so sin magtagbaw na pud ko og trace asa to inyo hang output ba so just go to Quipper, na add it to koan, tong video recording sa how to look for a research title or topic. Click to siya, doha to siya ka page. Ang second page is ang link sa Google Form. And then just read the um, instructions. Okay, so welcome to Lesson 2. We're almost done with Unit 1. No? After the exam, we will proceed with Lesson 3. And then also, I will teach you how to write your research introduction. So, before Tamu start, have you ever looked around and wonder how things are related to one another? Like when you think of, for example, your emotions, no? And the weather. Does the weather connect sometimes to how you feel, no? Or how comfortable you are? If it's hot, do you feel more irritable, no? If it's cold, do you feel sleepy, no? So, have you ever looked around and wonder if there are two different things that are not really the same but connected to each other? Class. 
Was there an instance nga, kaya na mo nga, mm, does the weather connect to how I'm feeling right now? Or for example, does the amount of sleep that I currently have affects how I am productive throughout the day? Did it come into your mind? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, unsa man to ang mga examples nga inyo na nanaan nga nga nang mo connect. Like for example, ah, I was too distracted mo gurong gamay ra akong score sa exam. Oh, maybe that could be like the connection why um because I was too distracted with my classmates, no? Pag mo po na siguro nga example or alam mo ko itarong kaon gud ako ka breakfast mo na siguro nga I wasn't able to think clearly. It's not always the cause. Now, when you think about connections class, it's not always the cause why you aren't able to think clearly, but there is a connection. No? Lahim mo ang connection sa causation. Ang causation is, siya ang primary reason all the time. While ang connection is, it may be one of the reasons na no, you weren't able to think clearly or ka nang medyo mag-struggle ka, no? kaya nang mental block ka, but it's not the, the main reason should all the time. No? Nga kasunod adlaw, nakakauna ka, pero maglaen na siya po ni mong huna-huna, di siya po kakathink clearly. So, it's not the cause. No? Maybe if there's a connection, but it's not the main cause. No? Sometimes things are like that. So, we're going to learn more about the difference sa relationship o causation or cause. Kay, although, katong nag, nag huna, -huna sa lesson 1, no? mara mag-similar si correlation o si, com og si ko ayon ma'am, o si comparative at times or si experimental research may pagka similarities man siya sa correlational like how can we identify their differences so that is what we're going to do this afternoon so before we'll proceed with um learning more about correlational and causal research survey research and experimental research um, we are going to learn more about first our learning objective. So the, at the end of this topic or at this lesson, you'll be able to identify different types of quantitative research. Actually, kato kung explain last time class lesson one, mo onjud to siya, no? Katong non-experimental o experimental research. Then duha ka types of experimental, tulo ka types of non-experimental research. Kani siya maratagga dig deeper jud ba? No kay medyo nagtouch siya ta lightly on what is correlational. And then experimental research, but we haven't really dug deeper on its true meaning or how it applies to different fields. So, can you should follow up sa lesson one? So, at the end of the lesson, you'll also be able to explain the characteristics of each type of quantitative research. Apply the types of quantitative research that is appropriate for each specific field. Now, what I want you to do is I want everyone to list down keywords, no? So, what comes into your mind? Siguro, masking duha lang keywords. What comes into your mind when you hear the words survey? So, list down two keywords that comes into your mind. Pagka basa ni mo sa word nga survey, it may be like, kuan ma'am, ang keyword is research or ang keyword ana is um, standardized. Kay, I remember what you said last time about types of survey instruments or survey questionnaires. O pwede yung ana, no? And experimental. So you kindly list down two keywords each, no? Um, that comes into your mind when you hear the words survey and experimental or experiment day, sorry, experiment. So two keywords for survey, two keywords for experiment. So I'll give you sugar mga two minutes to think. On sa may mga keywords nga maabot sa kung huna every time that I would hear the word survey. And what also comes into my mind when I hear the word experiment? Oh, well, maybe it's experiment. I would think mm, laboratory or, or sa na I remember last time, um, quasi or true or kau na bahala huna huna unsa ato mga keywords? So I'll give you two minutes to think. At least mga person kag at least four kabo keywords duha duha each.
Ay, sorry. Naka-mute the echo. <laughs> sorry. Time's up. Tingala ko man may audio. So, those who would like to volunteer, you may raise your hand. No? Based on the keywords in Gilista, kanina, no? just a while ago, how would you describe the survey and experiment? It, um, in your doon nga at least in a narrative response na. No? Um, for me, ma'am, survey is, so then gamitin ka atong mga keywords ng mong nalista. Okay, how would you describe survey and experiment based on the common keywords that you listed a while ago? If you would like to volunteer, you can raise your hand. Make use of the raise button. Wala. Okay, I would like to ask Maxine. Maxine, can you explain? Okay. Ang um, keyword sa survey lang kay kung una na ako na ako na ano kay sa amin sa lugar lang. Okay. Sa okay. Sa experiment kay mura ka sa labor laboratory lang ba? Okay. So research. Okay, so thank you, uh, Ms. Maxino. So for you, you would describe survey as um, a way or a tool that would examine um, not just no, the environment but the variables no, or the data. And experiment for you is conducted in a laboratory. Okay. Who would like to share some more? Okay. So, Ms. Levares raised her hand. Actually, Duhat, I wasn't able to get the other one. Sorry. So, yes, Miss Princess, you can. Yes, Dam. Okay, go ahead. My keywords for survey, Dam, is sample and questions, hmm. while my keywords for experiment is numbers and signs. Okay, so why did you specifically choose... Um, sample and skitong osagan is for survey. Sample Questions and, them. Okay, why did you specifically um, chose sample and questions? Okay, if you conduct a survey, them you have to have a group of sample and then questionnaires them para nila. Okay. okay, so for the experiment, why did you choose skitong osa science and numbers them? Numbers, okay. Why do you want to? Uh, why did you choose those two, two keywords? Um, gigamit na ako ka ng choose na ko ang numbers and signs dam kay sa experiment dam para na ko is involved ang numbers and then mostly scientific siya dam. Okay, so thank you so much, Miss Princess. No, so both Maxine and Princess answers are actually correct. No and. Um, later on, we will discover why in survey, no, involves of questions and sample that is correct. In experiment, kay in experiment, kay involves of scientific method that is true because you are using interventions than data collection in experiments. No, um, if uh, after the exam, ato nang ipak. I, I compare kung si kalihaan nilang duha. Kaya sa experiment pang good class, it's not the same process with a survey research. Ang experiment research is more on interventions. And correct po to ka, Maxino, usually done in laboratory or in a confined space where you can manipulate the variables. And even you can segregate them into groups. No, nga, we're in a ay, group nga mo observe if na changes ani nga group nga i-experimentuhan. No? And then, both are actually the involved of numbers because in quantitative research, measurable ang data. It could be in a form of size, weight, um, number of responses, pila kabok ang ning agree, pila kabok ang ning disagree, age, duration. So, both ga involved of numbers. No? 
basta in quantitative research is much more measurable, data is more valuable than qualitative nga non-numerical ang data nga gina-collect. Okay? So thank you for your responses no. Um I think it's clear that you already had done your um uh, advanced reading because you're able to um describe it very well no ang survey and experiment or you were just so observant based on our previous discussion atong sa lesson 1. So thank you for your responses ladies. So let us try to recall no what is quantitative research. So quantitative research is defined as a means for testing objective theories by examining their relationship among variables. So that is according to Creswell in 2009. Quantitative research may either be correlational or causal. Take note, when you talk about causal research class, dira na mo fall ang experimental research. Nya kung sa non-experimental research, dira na mo fall ang comparative study. But ato man na ato last time na no, comparative study can either be causal or correlational. Kung bitaw na siya nga, Kung may yung yung causal class na like cause and effect relationship, it's always experimental research. Kung sa non-experimental na atay comparative. No? And then sa correlational, of course, no? Correlational research. Be sometimes na apoy comparative nga, nga part. Okay, comparative can be both causal and correlational. May yung tag correlational class, recall ta sa itong gidiscuss at itong paglason 1, as long as ga determine siya if na ay existing relationship between one variable and another. Like for example, sleep and test scores, playing video games and academic performance. Um, what else? Nagan pa na um, crime rate and immigration. Now, these are two different variables, but you're trying to determine if na ay connection o oh. other words relationship if na by connection nilang duha no na abay connection ang length of sleep nako sa test scores no or ang results sa ko ang test ani nga subject kay the more nga taas akong sleep the more ga function akong brain and the more nga better ang results sa ko ang test no that's correlational ang causal is na adu siya cause and effect meaning I am going to manipulate the independent variable to see if it can affect the dependent variable. Or, wala ko i-manipulate, no? Ako arang i-expose si dependent variable, which are the participants, sa experiment, and then expose them to an environment and try to see if there will be changes in their behavior or how they will react. That's causal. Meaning, I cause and effect relationship. Ang correlational, if naara ay connection nilang duha. Okay. So, muna to ang i-learn I karong hapon. So, in general, quantitative research focuses on the following. First, quantitative research is a collection of observable and measurable data. Unsa man ni sila, class, mo rin siya kung gimension kanina nga ang, basta mag-collect itag data sa quantitative class, mag-make use itag numerical data. Again, it could be for a while. Oh, uh, it could be um, anything that will be expressed in numerical form. No, like for example, amount, duration, length, price, size, number of responses. Pila ka buok out of four hundred? Ning respond og yes. Ning respond og no. Ning respond og five five, which is um, strongly agree or one strongly disagree. So all data are expressed in numerical form. No, that's what makes the data in quantitative research observable and measurable. No, again, if you compare it to qualitative, must na value and much more accurate siya because it's observable and measurable. Kaya numerical data man siya compared to qualitative nga open ended mano in a form of like essays or interviews no anang mag perception ni, ni participant no so wala ga involve og numerical data and then in quantitative research standardized data collection instrument diba kato kung giingon ninyo last time class nga there are two types of survey questionnaire or research instrument para sa na silang duha no lain lain rog terms um, ang survey instrument nato or survey questionnaire can be both standardized and self-made. 
Self-made is ikaw muhimo sa mong mga questions. But of course, nandiyan pong kay basihan, no? Well, ang standardized is mukuha ka og idea from another researcher and then you will get that as your basis in making your survey questionnaire. Hulmon ni mo iya hang questionnaire from this researcher, mananghid ka, then imuha lang i-revise ginagmay. But the idea is still there. No? So in quantitative research, although there are two types of data collection instrument or survey questionnaire, pwede man siya standardized, pwede man siya self-made, pero mostly, mas highly encourage ang standardized questionnaire class because it's much more accurate and kuha d'yo ka sa reliable na resource, uh, a source which is from another researcher. Okay. Next is statistical techniques in data analysis. Gamik you see quantitative research og statistics. Ito na tangi historia last time, no? Mercator for refresher lang niba. Niba, so mo gamit ta og statistics or mathematical procedures, no? Like chi square, t test, z test, ANOVA, simple percentage method, um, weighted mean, no? In order to analyze or inter interpret all of the data that we have gathered during the survey. Okay. So we did made mention that quantitative research can be both correlational and causal. So when we the correlational research class, it involves identifying relationships between two variables. Hatan ako example kanina. According to Van der Stoep and, John, and Johnston in their study in 2009, a correlation is a statistical measure of association between two variables. Is there a connection between these two variables or not? Okay, then there are times mga good class na wala po siya strong association or connection. But that's okay. You know, that is what your objective is all about. Is for you to determine if there is a significant relationship or a connection between these two variables. While well, see, causal research looks at causes and effect according to van der Soep and johnston still no in the same research in 2009 a causation refers to the claim that a change in one variable creates a change in another variable Masyag na snowball effect baronong if we are going to manipulate the independent variable it's going to cause an effect to the dependent variable that's causal research okay so, I'm going to confuse that too, ha? Correlational only identifies a connection between two variables and sometimes it does not have a causal relationship. Na ay times nga, this other variable is not a direct cause while this second variable changes. There may be a connection nilang duha pero wala like cause and effect relationship. While in causation, na ay cause and effect relationship siya. Usually, this is commonly done in an experimental research. Okay. So what is the difference between correlational and causation? Balik kayo siya tanong. Or at least mga sabdan pa siya ninyo. So correlational research looks at the following. Whether na ay connection or association ga exist nilang duha. The magnitude or kabukaton sa existing association between two variables. Na abay significant relationship. No, You will commonly see this when you read research titles, when you read the research titles of, or research um, outputs of the other senior high school students that came before you, no, na yung bandira, significant relationship of, oh, so, na, unsa kabuk aton, ang exist, if there is a connection, unsa kabuk aton, no, and what is the direction of the association between two variables? Is it closely related to each other? Are these two variables closely connected or diligent siya closely connected? For example, katong sa sleep and test scores, no? If closely connected with each other kaning two variables, sleep and test scores, then all of the students would be experiencing the same. No, once they will be sleeping in longer hours, their test scores will improve. No, na ay morag consistency ba? And it happens frequently. But, if well, ang direction sila hang connection class between two variables like sleep and test scores are far apart, meaning it's not all the time nga masking taas pa ka og tulog, sometimes it will not really improve your test scores. Kay it's not the main reason nga numutas si mong test scores, maski matulog pa ka or dili, kung di madyo ka magtuon, no? kamay radyo po na yung test scores, diba? So, wala strong connection nilang duha.
So example no money siya kung giingon kanina, example of correlational research is the relationship between hours of sleep and test scores among students. Based on the main focus points of correlational research, the following results are possible. Now, for example, no, mukunda ka og study about ani. Kinahan man ka makabalo nga kung taas og hours matulog kami tanan, mo improve ba na siya ang test scores namo? So at the end of the study na anay two possible result. Either ang now ang first result is walay significant relationship between hours of sleep and test scores among students. Basta kung giingon kanina no nga skin 8 hours pa ka matulog, alas 8 pa ka matulog, hangtod alas 6 sa kadlawon or alas 7 sa buntag no. Your test scores will never improve. So na walay significant relationship. No, there's no connection between number of hours of sleep and test scores. Or, lahi na po ang results in mong study. You found out that higher test scores are closely related or connected to more hours of sleep among students. Because the more na taas ilahang sleep, the more nga may improve ang ilahang like thinking. No, dili was like brain fog baro no, and they were able to remember what they have studied or from the previous discussion sa teacher. So that can really help improve sa test scores. Okay? So again, when you conduct a correlational research class, all you have to identify if naabay significant relationship or wala. If wala gani kay magkitang significant relationship, that's okay. You will just then prove there in your study nga. For example, no, voting does not decrease crime rate because wala significant relationship between them. Or, based on my study, I have found out that the kopode ka ayog effect ang um no no na ay na ay connection ang pag taas sa crime rate sa pagdaghan sa mga immigrants no or sa katumobia sa nasod kaya they don't feel like they are safe anymore okay so narejud ana no so whether there is significant relationship or not if your study is more on correlation your purpose ra is to find out if na abay association or connection ga exist between two variables. Unsa siya kabug ato ng ilahang connection if naaba jud. And unsa ilang direction sa connection nilang duha. Is it close to each other or apart ra? Relational research is often used in quantitative research in social sciences nga field. For example, in psychology, political science, and economics. Because like what I've said earlier, class, no, na may mga certain factors, class, nga can, you know, connect with our mood. Like because it's so hot, sometimes it can be connected why I'm so irritable or I'm so exhausted. Pwede na siya ing ana, no. It's not the direct cause why I'm exhausted, maybe because kulang po ko sa tulog, but it's one of like the contributing factors ra, or there's a connection why I'm also feeling more exhausted. Connection na siya per dili main cause. Okay? So in psychology, kay, di ba, pinaka-common dyan yung correlational research sa social sciences, correlational research is used to look at patterns and associations of human behavior. An example of correlational research in psychology is looking at where there is a connection. Magamit ko word nga connection ha para mas madali ninyo masabtan. So if na by connection between number of hours a student spends on social media and his or her academic performance. So the more baga spend of time si students sa social media, does it affect his academic performance positively or negatively? In economics, correlational research may be also used to determine what affects or is affected by certain economic variables. An example is looking at the relationship between foreign exchange rates and the credit rating of a particular country. So, sa Manisha, for example, if the foreign exchange rate of dollars and peso kay mutaas ang exchange rate sa dollars, no, mo, mo mahal increase. Nyo na nao ninyo class ang utang raba nato sa Pilipinas no kay in dollars. Meaning kung mo increase ang dollars class in exchange rate, mo increase pud ang ato ang utang. And the more magkamahal ang mga bay bayranan kay mo add man na og tax, kay asa man ta mo bayad sa utang sa Pilipinas, of course in our taxes. Mabitaw na no nga, mingon akong mga 
um, a political friends nga, why I'm so political in social media? Because you're paying taxes. That is our money. No? The government is using our tax to to pay for funds, baron, for infrastructure, for utang sa Pilipinas. So we need to choose better leaders that would really make use or maximize our taxes nga dili for personal gain. Diba? So, yan na class, no? Na I, I determine mo ang relationship between foreign exchange rate and credit rating of a particular country. If mutaas ang exchange rate or ang exchange sa dollars, mutaas po na nga tong utang because ang utang sa Pilipinas is in dollars. That means, mumahal po ang palito nun. Kadito sa tax, padakon ang tax, no? Kaya para ma- ma- maapas na sa atong bayranan nga utang sa World Bank, no? So, na ay relationship ay na no ang foreign exchange rate nga mag-increase ug ang credit rating sa particular country credit is utang credit okay sa so, kasabot ra class yes ma'am yes ma'am okay so in political science pod class correlational research may also be used to study whether an association exists between different political variables. An example is looking at the relationship between crime rate and the number of votes a politician garnered during an election. Example, anak class, no? Um, actually, nana ni siya study. O niya, ninggawas na ni ang, ang result, ani kay. Um, they would like to know if mo, na ba relationship between sa pag-increase a crime rate a number of votes because people believe that it if they will vote a certain politician that would lower the crime rate because that politician will make policies to lessen or prevent crime rate appeal na po dira ang poverty no because again crime rate is a result of poverty if daghan gani ang pobre no they will then resort to crime no or criminal activities mangawat sila mutulis no um Sag illegal activities. So, um, our, relationship is, our relationship study is determined to see if ang pagtaas ba sa crime rate may increase ba sa number of votes sa o sa kapolitician okay, during an election. Now, actually, ang result any class is voting does not decrease crime rate. And that's sad to know because uh, based on sa study is no matter how a lot of people will vote for a certain politician, if after sa, sa election, they will not make policies to help prevent poverty and crime rate, then magsigi-sigi na job po na. No? Kaya I was actually reading articles that can f- help me further explain this. Yung nakita na ko dito. Asa to siyang article ha? It's in my... Ah, okay. Kanin sa journal sa JSTOR and repository library in Georgetown and science daily it was published last 2017 voting does not reduce crime rate a study shows this is from Yale University published by science daily nga website okay so while correlational quantitative research can determine whether a relationship exists between two variables, it does not say that one variable causes the other. There could be a connection, pero dili siya again, dili siya ang main cause. Kaya mo yung gitag main cause class, na adyo kay gihimu aning o sa ka-variable nga mo directly affect the other variable. Kani is more makag-determine if na ba yung connection kung mutaas kung tulog? Na ba siya yung connection sa kung test course or wala? Okay, ana ra, no? Relationship or connection ay mong determine sa correlational research. Okay. So, if correlational research talks about relationships between two variables, si causal research deals with cause and effect and is much more popular in experimental research. An example of causal research class is examining the cost and effect relationship between a food ingredient and the rate of food decay of a food sample. A possible research study based on this example can examine how an additional unit of food ingredient can cause or lead to faster decay of the food sample. For example, I will be making a broth. One broth is bones ra ako ang idungag as an ingredient. While the other broth, I will be putting ingredients such as coconut milk and tomatoes. And 
you know, these ingredients can really cause food spoilage, no, if it's not stored in um in a proper like, temperature, no? So, may mo isa di ba nga if I'm going to add more of this kind of food ingredient, will it cause faster spoilage or faster dikit dali ba mga panos ang kaning usa ka pagkaon if dagan kog ibutang nga uh, ingredients compare aning usa nga uh, bones ra. Okay? I in in cooking mga good class when you make uh, beef stock or kanang murag base sa soup you would mag, magpakulo man kag bones no para makonjo nimo ang flavor ba so mo na murag imong isa di ba if the more ba kong butang og ing ani nga mga ingredients sa pagkaon mas paspas ba siya madaot compare sa usa nga gamay ang ingredients so murag you purposely affect or kanang murag purposely uh, manipulate this kind of variable like food ingredients to see if there will be changes in the dependent variable. So, causal research is often used in studying the natural sciences. No, pinakabon din siya klasa biology, physics, chemistry. No, nga we're in. You would conduct like an experiment in a laboratory. Kaya tungod, may mga kita og causal research class. More magusong interventions kaysa sa magcollect og like data through survey. No. So since you are going to look at the cause and effect, and there's manipulation, jud, no? So usually it's commonly found in science, but it is not exclusive to this field alone. In chemistry, causal research is applied in the conduct of chemical experiments to see whether a change in the quantity of one substance affects the characteristics of another substance. Or take for example, I'm not really that, kaan ha kanang of an expert in chemistry. Um, although I like science, so promotion ang subject na medyo, medyo delicate ko, strong. So, take for example, if I'm going to uh, apply um, ano sa may mga kuan sa mga chemicals nga mga kuan da yun o Okay. For example, I'm conducting an experiment and then I'm going to add more um, hydrogen peroxide. Ay, for example, sa Osaka um, vial, no? Pagamayin po ng vial po, no? Beaker na lang. So, sa ka beaker, mubutang abi ko og Nitric acid, no? Sa duha. So, na ako itong substances dire, yung magbutang ko og nitric acid or hydrogen peroxide na lang, no? hydrogen peroxide. O niya, ang sa Osaka beaker, I would put like, siguro ko an lang, um, like a drop of hydrogen peroxide. Like one drop lang. Sa pikas, ko an ako, ah, like one teaspoon, jud, no? Ayan, naka, kadaghan nga amount sa hydrogen peroxide i would see if na by change no sa kaning duha ka substances kay na may changes in quantity sa akong ibutang kani gamay ang akong ibutang nga uh, hydrogen peroxide sa beaker 1 sa beaker 2 kay mas daghan and then i would see if na abay different reactions sa duha based on the number of quantity of hydrogen peroxide that i will be putting in each substances okay kay may uban nga sobraan gani butang lahi na ang iyahang chemical reaction so osa is it will just stay the same, no? So that's an example of like causal research. Okay. So since we made mention that correlational research is mostly on survey, while well, see causal research is more of like an experimental kind of research. And earlier, no, I did let you define the difference between survey and experimental. So you will try to see the difference between survey and experimental research class. In survey research, it's more of a correlational type of quantitative research 
Why? Because this design make use of questionnaire as its main data collection tool. Meaning, ga make use siya of questionnaire with list of questions to gather data. Patag ko o example sa questionnaire. So, kung correlational research sa class, kalabanan ing ani. No? This is an example of a survey questionnaire. So, it involves, like itong giingon ni Princess no nga na ay sample, na ay list of questions, which, which is correct. No? Yung ikaw survey class, list of questions with close-ended na siya nga responses. May yung itag close-ended responses, dili sila pwede kahatag og other responses other than yes or no, or um, strongly agree, strongly disagree, no, kung scaling ba siya. Okay? While si correlation, uh, si experimental is more at causation. So, naa siya cause and effect logic. So, usually, kung may yung experimental research, wala siya gamik yung sub survey questionnaire, kundi interventions judayon siya. So, with the use of cause and effect logic, it looks at whether the application of a treatment known as an intervention causes an effect on the sample being experimented on, according to the study of Creswell in 2009 and Leavy in 2017. What is an intervention? For example, I would be um, gathering two groups. No, Before I would apply the intervention, I would record what is their behavior before the intervention. So... Um, before na ko sila expose ani nga environment, I will try to observe first if kaling two groups on sa ilahang common reaction or behavior. Once I apply the treatment or intervention, ako silang expose sa environment that will cause them stress. Mas stress sila. Or sa squid game, no, nga mas stress ka. So, mas stress. After the intervention has been applied to these two groups, observe ko, observe. After ana Mahuma na no, ako na silang kwao na to sa environment nga that will cause them stress. I will remove them from that from that environment. Then I will observe if there will be changes in their behavior before and after the intervention. So before nag-starting intervention, tong wala pa sila na stress. Kuan pa kaysa, they were quite friendly with each other. No? Dili pa kaayo sila hostile. Once I apply the intervention, no? they were frantic. Um... They were hostile with each other. And then after na sa katong experiment, I've noticed nga much more aggressive ang ilahang behavior after the intervention compared to before the intervention. Oh, that's experimental research. They do not make use of questionnaires, but they do make use of interventions and experiments. Okay? And it's much more kuti siya class, no? Kaya ang prospect niya na siya pre-experimental na ay na po siya process nga wherein it, it would involve two or three groups na iuban nga usara ka group, no? So, medyo mas, mas intricate, uh, intricate ang experimental research, mas kuti siya compared to survey research. Kaso, no, na po siya setbacks ang duha na ang usa is if you're going towards um, a standardized questionnaire, you have to ask permission from the author or connect with the author ng imong hulman sa questionnaire so that you can base your own questions from the questionnaire of the author. So, medyo dugay-dugay dyan ang process, ano, no? And then, sa experimental research, medyo kuti because you're going to plot out the process of your experiment first before applying it. Because one mistake in applying your intervention can really cause a big effect in the um, results of your experiment. So, kuan po kayo siya, no? Kuti po kayo siya, class niya. Kuan kayo siya ka ng kinahanglan po siya o proper planning. So, what are the main components of a survey research? So, we have survey design, population and sample, survey instrument, data analysis and interpretation. So, it's almost four. Actually, taas-taas mong ganyan siya. Dili na lang nako siya pugson. kay I if I were to discuss the first component, basi niyag ma malimot ang muna kaya napatay one week nga interval kaya mag exam pa man next week before we will continue with this part. Kaya medyo lengthy siya ang each component. I have to discuss this and elaborate this and then we will also compare it with experimental research. So, 
it has other components that is different from the survey research class no na siya stages of experimental procedure which is very kuti kaayo na different experimental procedures na instrumentation and materials na data analysis and interpretation so much kuti siya compared to survey research mo bitaw na class no nga kung mag experimental research mo you need the resources Kaya they ha there are many stages in experimental research mangud compared to survey research or non experimental research nga survey questionnaire. Kanira jud inyo ha class o patra jud. Compared dire nga daghan no unom unom ka components. So I will not take deeper to this part usa because it's very lengthy. I have to really explain this. Yeah, dritso, dritso. Di pwede maputol, no? Kay base niya maglisod ta o connect kay taas pa ang atong interval. One one week pa. So, in ka, ka first week pa of October ta mo magbalik o kita. No? So, we will just stop here. Okay? Sa experimental research. I don't know. Components of survey research. Yeah, sorry. Any questions before we will end our discussion? None. Okay. Um, I will also provide you with the pointers for your exam. So, for our while class, ha? Ang cover sa exam will be lesson one or the class. But, dili siya ingon nga kung unsay na asa PowerPoint, mojo ti mugawas word for word, no? Um, as much as possible, we like to encourage students to really remember what we have discussed. So, there is a knowledge base, no, a memorization lang, but it's more on what you have understood from lesson one. So, hatag ko og overview sa exam na to. So, your exam will be divided into Japan class, ha? Four, four man gorene. Mm -mm. Four sections. So if you're uh, if you're going to access now your exam no next week, um first part is prayer. Make sure that you also fill out your email. Make use of your CSR email ha. And then afterwards, name of student and then your strand. The first test is more of like an essay type or constructed response nga exam where it talks more on kato discuss din ako tanan sa lesson 1 class no kato unsa ang kalahian sa quantitative ug qualitative unsa ang kalahian sa independent ug dependent variable unsa tong mga characteristics sa quantitative research like why is it ob um, objective rather than subjective si quantitative uh, in what way man ta maka generalize no? ngano na ay general generalizability in research or quantitative research um what else how ngano kinahanglan nga na replicability in quantitative research kana may anak nga questions class no and then for test 2 i will be providing five cases so five questions for each section ha so kana na siya since four sections man so 20 items tanan so, um, sa test 2 is I will provide you with 5 situations or 5 cases and you will identify which in the situation is the independent variable o asa dira si dependent variable. Basta inyo halang siya i-remember class, ang independent variable gani, mo na siya itong i-manipulate to affect the dependent variable. O si dependent variable, mauna siya ang mausab or na I changes or ato ang gina observe from the independent variable. No, kayo, apektuhan man siya tungkol sa independent variable, na ito changes. No, nga matabo. So, five, five situations na siya. And then, inyo na ibutang, for example, oh, independent variable, ma'am, is ang diet. Like katong fruits o katong pellets nga ihatag na mo sa hamster. That's the independent variable. Kaya mo man ang i-manipulate to change the dependent variable. Well, ang dependent variable, ma'am, is ang brain growth sa hamster. 
kay because of the diet or the different food nga ilang ginakaon, mausab ang ilahang brain growth. Ang usa has better memory than the other. Okay, so yung ana pag answer no? And then, I will, the uh, third section, five questions Japon, five scenarios, and you'll have to identify if unsa nga type of quantitative study ang kada scenario or kada case. Like for example, Scenario number one, mo ni siya ang situation, and then only identify if it's correlational ba siya, meaning ga determine if na ay relationship between two variables, or comparative ba siya, meaning comparing two groups, no? Pas katong ni Agi og summer class, so gula ni Agi og summer class, dahil ni identify asa ang better academic performance ni Landuha. That's comparative, meaning comparing two groups with an independent variable. And then experimental research na ay cause and effect. So, a manipulation of independent variable to affect the dependent variable. Descriptive research is walay relationship na establish, walay comparison between two groups, wala may cause and effect, but mostly gina describe ra ang characteristic or ang current situation sa variable. No same sa katong gihatin yung answer na ko ato class ba nga ni assess ra siya sa reading skills sa mga bata. That's descriptive research. And then the last part sa exam is katotong gibuhat gani sa una class nga gipa describe ta mo sa inyo hang strand using words and numbers. So you'll be identifying objects in your house and describe them using qualitative descriptors like, you know, katong ga describe using characteristics without numbers like color, shape, or size, and quantitative nga ga use of numerical. Descriptors like height, weight, thickness, baron. Um, sa pamaylain. Quantity, pila ka buok, pwede po na, no? Basta quantitative, more on numerical descriptions. And then that's it, no? Maura um, man na siya ang... Yeah, Ipa-explain naman ako ninyo, asa ang better ni Landuha, asang mas accurate. Maura man na usually. So again, the exam is more on critical thinking and more on examining on how well you have understood our previous lesson in lesson one. So you can't actually Google them online. No, kamo should balak mo analyze sa situation. Okay, twenty items lang for four sections sa exam. Twen uh, margin na siya. Lesson 1 na dyan tanan ha. Ang kanina lesson 2, wala man ako siya gi-appeal sa exam. Pero may, may makuha man siya pun ka nga mag-explanation din nga that can also help you with the exam. Pud. Any questions before we will end? Dam. Yes, go ahead, Jeff. Urasan mi pag ko an exam dam. Hmm? Urasan mi pag exam dam. Um... As far as I could remember, no, I think the same rang uh, um, arrangement pag last year, more like one day, you're given a day to finish all of your ex exams for the daily. For example, third day pa ako, ah, nya, naapok kay, naapo kay exam ka o ba na ano, like practical research baron and statistics or practical research o risk reduction. O ba na siya? No? So, Kanan ka subject or tulo ka subject you have to finish that within the day. Okay, dam. Thank you, dam. Okay. Actually, you are, you are quite fortunate no, to have that uh, our college students are only given two hours to answer the exam and that really puts a lot of pressure on them. I remember I had one student nga late siya nakamata niya pag-open niya din siya ka-access sa exam. But anyway, you are still in the basic ed. As much as we don't want to baby you, no? kaya di man mo i-baby na kay second year college naman tani mo. But as, as far as I could remember, I think that's the arrangement nila sa basic ed. So, we will just follow that. Okay? So, tagaan mo time to think. At least, no, medyo taas-taas po siya. At the same time, make sure that when you submit your answer, you have to review it. Ha? Dili magdali kay Tibuk Adlaw para dyan siya sa inyong examination. If you still have questions with regards to what will happen during the exam and the exam schedule, you can kindly ask your advisor. Some more questions? Hello, wala na? Wala na, Dam. 
Okay. So thank you for the confirmation. I do hope you don't have any troubles with your group mates. So I highly encourage that everyone will participate and cooperate no with each other. Kay so good pala ngayon no, ang naiuban na nga I've been hearing complaints from the leaders nga naiuban nga wala nag for not from this strand of course no. Nga naiuban nga wala nag commit sa ilahang work and title pa man no. Title pa lang gani ga lisod na og commit ang uban how much more kung magsugo na jud tag sulat sa chapter 1. So I do hope nga this will not happen in this strand. So far wala pa koy na dong gandiri and I hope this will continue until we start on writing the introduction. Okay, so thank you so much everyone for joining me this afternoon. Again, good luck with your exam. Um, study well. No? And if you can't remember what we have discussed from the previous meetings, the recording is just available in YouTube. No, If you can still retrieve that from Quipper, pwede po. Pero mag I heard nga, dilay, mandaw ko na mo kabalik no, sa Quipper. So sige lang, naaraman sa YouTube. Aktual lang ako ang YouTube account. Pangalan naman ako kung gigamit. And then, I-search lang ito sa mga grade 12 STEM nga videos. Sa karun nga year, ha, kayo basta na, yung mahalungkat ang pag last year. So, lahi man akong PowerPoint gigamit karun nga year o last year. Okay? So, before we will end, let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Saint Rita, pray for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, thank you so much, grade 12 STEM students, and good luck in your exam next week. Thank you, Thank Dan. you, Dan. Bye, Dan. Bye, everyone. Thank you.